Hey, how's everyone doing? Welcome. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Uh, we're going to sing a lot of songs. And that pretty much sums up the service now that I think about it. I felt like that was leading into something else. But uh, why don't we stay seated for the first song? But as is the custom, uh, what did Adam say to his wife on December 24th? It's Christmas Eve. You're welcome. <laughs> feel warmed up? Was everyone singing? Yeah, I believe you. It sounded really good. Why don't we stand up, give somebody a handshake or something just to get loosened up a little bit. Here's what I like to sing as loudly as possible. So let's all join in here on these Christmas carols. Sound good? Joyful. 
that's why this jubilee, why your joyous strains belong. Say what may that tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song. Amen. Welcome again to the church. Uh, we're going to light some Advent candles, and why don't you sit down? You might need to squeeze in because people are still arriving and get to know somebody. <laughs> what did Adam say? Or no? Nope. I already did that one. <laughs> oh. Here's Sal and his family. I feel like we should give you a hand, Sal. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God is good, isn't he? Yeah. Well, uh, good evening. This is my wonderful family, my wife and my four kids. And two came back home to spend the holidays with us. So thank God for that. So uh, I'll be reading this evening, and they will be taking turns lighting the candles. Advent means coming, and in this season, we prepare for the coming of Christ. We're reminded of the gifts Jesus brings to the world as we light the candles of the Advent wreath. The first week, we lit the candle of hope. The second week, we lit the candle of peace. The third week, we lit the candle of joy. And the fourth week, we lit the candle of love. Today, we light the Christ candle, the candle which reminds us of Jesus. It is the center of the wreath, just as Jesus is the center of our lives. The light of Christ shines for all of us to see. Yep. Got it. And now here is our prayer. Generous God, you have given us time of preparation to receive again your gift of love, joy, hope, and healing. In the birth of the child Jesus, you have given new life to each of us. May we experience the presence of Emmanuel, God with us, this day and always. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Great job. Let's stay seated for the next song. Let's sing, uh, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Okay. 
Let's all stand up for the next song. Stretch out a little bit and sing with much aplomb.
Amen. All right, now's the time that you can turn and say, hey, Merry Christmas to somebody. And why don't you grab a seat while you're at it? And we'll hear some uh, things. All right, potty break, y'all. Hello, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas Eve. Man, y'all are so much more awake in the evening. <laughs> I'm loving it. Well, it's good to see you all. I'm Pastor Sam Tidball. I'm the youth pastor here, so I get to hang out with our awesome teenagers and all that fun stuff. Um, first, I just wanted to let you know that um, there are some cards in the seats in front of you, and we have our welcome card that looks a little bit like this. So if you're new or you want more information about the church, you can fill out this card and put it in the offering bag that will get passed around a little bit later. There's also a prayer card that you can fill out, and we pray over your um, prayer requests and the things that you're grateful for. And we pray over those as a staff um, throughout the week. So you are covered in prayer. And I also wanted to let you know that if you heard about us or you saw our Facebook ad or Twitter or any other kinds of social media, you can actually go to the welcome table and tell them um, how you heard about us today and you will get a free gift. So that's exciting. So head over to the welcome table, which is by the front door in the lobby area and get a free gift afterwards. And now I'm going to tell you about a few of our upcoming events and things you might want to know. First of all, tonight is our donut giveaway, right? Get excited. This is one of our favorite holiday traditions here at Vineyard. So we hand out donuts to people who are working on Christmas Eve because, man, if you were working on Christmas Eve, wouldn't it be awesome if someone just showed up and they're like, sweet, have this donut. It's from the Vineyard Church. Right, so if you want, you can pass out donuts, head to the cafe after the service. And our rotating shelter started yesterday. So we're partnering with the Shelter Association of Washtenaw County to host up to 25 men overnight here at Vineyard from December 23rd through the 30th. So we, along with other local churches, we just wanna provide a safe and warm place to sleep for the coldest months of the year. And we're especially looking for folks who can stay for the overnight shifts. And if you wanna help, uh, we just we really could use you, so you can email Pastor Sean for more details. Sunday, December 29th, will be our annual all-church gratitude celebration. This is one of my favorite um, things that we do in the year. It's where kids and youths and adults, we all come together to worship and celebrate and remember what God has done over the past year. Um, so definitely come, and pajamas are encouraged. I know I'm going to be wearing pajamas because... Why wouldn't you wear pajamas if people say that you can? You know, I wear them pretty much every day. So definitely come and check that out. Now, seeing as tonight is our Christmas Eve candlelight service, I'm going to go over some helpful hints with how to actually light the candles. So we want to ensure you that you, that you light your candle in a safe, controlled, non-alarming manner, right? Super important. Our ushers, they're going to start the fires burning in each section. That sounds bad, but they'll do it in a safe, controlled, non-alarming manner, right? So we're going to show you. I've got my friends Kat and Steve up here on the stage with me, which I'm really excited. Right? Yeah, you can, you can cheer them on, right? So the ushers will come forward and light the candle. Do you see how Kat's just holding it real chill in a safe, controlled non-alarming manner. Do you see that? Once your candle is lit, keep it upright. Your neighbor's candle will approach yours in a safe, controlled, non-alarming manner. You got it. I love it. You guys are so smart. So don't be afraid. Stay very still as the candle approaches yours, just like you saw. While your candle remains upright, your neighbor's candle will swaddle itself into a horizontal position. Your neighbor will use your candle to light their own candle. And how will they do this? In a safe, controlled, non-alarming manner. Oh my goodness, this is great. You guys get it. So then you repeat the procedure with your neighbors and your next of kin until every candle has been lit and it's going to be glorious. So when extinguishing your candles, please do so in a safe, controlled, non-alarming manner. Make every utmost effort to avoid spraying hot wax on your neighbor's neck. Very important. Well, this might cause them to yelp and exclaim with loud oaths. 
Instead, you use your hand to block the hot wax and blow your candle out in a safe, controlled, non-alarming manner. Great. You guys get it. You're awesome. Thank you, Kat, Steve. Did so well. We do have a couple of spaces for vocal kids during the celebration. We have a cry room over here to my right, which is your left, um, for just, that's just for moms with kids. Um, but you can also go to our lobby and that's for moms and dads and anyone else who wants to go and there's seats in the gallery in that area. We're now going to continue our worship with an offering. So you can put cash or checks into the offering bag. You can use a credit or a debit card at our giving kiosk in the lobby. You can actually even Venmo us at um, A2 Vineyard. All of these gifts tonight will be given to help spread the practical mercy of Jesus through acts of mercy and kindness, both in Ann Arbor and the surrounding areas. So will you join me now as we pray for our offering? Jesus, thank you for the gifts that you provide us. We want to give some of it back now. Please use these gifts to let the hungry be fed, the lonely be comforted, to bless those in need. We pray that you will be greatly trusted and praised as we give. We ask these things in your name. Amen. As the offering bags make their way around the sanctuary, we can get all cozied up for Pastor Marissa's short talk. Thanks, Pastor Sam. Merry Christmas, church. It's a good day to celebrate God's gifts to us in Jesus. If you've been around the past few weeks, you've heard a lot about light and darkness during Advent. Christmas is a really special time of year where it's easier to see how light and darkness work together instead of seeing them as enemies. When there's cold and snow outside, it makes the lights on the tree look a little brighter, a little warmer. When we light candles and we turn off the lights and our eyes adjust to that glow, it's like we're in a place where light and darkness meet and it's beautiful. So we've taken this season to try and open our eyes to ways that God is with us in the darkness, just as much as God is with us in the light. When we're directionless, broken, feeling far from God, that darkness is still the stuff of new beginnings to the God who said, let there be light. As I think about light and darkness and Jesus, this word that keeps coming to mind is mystery. We know that the darkness is full of things that we can't fully grasp, but we're not very good at thinking about mystery as something that could be good. Mysteries are usually bad or scary. Now, this is where Christmas can be handy, because if you're lying in the dark at night and you hear the floorboards creak, you think, someone's in my house, or what's out there? It can be a scary kind of mystery, but if it's Christmas, you think it's Santa, and it's a happy kind of mystery, okay? So this is where we want to lean into mystery can be something good. We don't just have to think, I got to solve it. We can be full of wonder instead of full of questions or suspicions needing to get to the bottom of it. Christmas is an invitation to get comfortable with this kind of mystery, to celebrate this kind of mystery, the mystery of a child being born, the mystery of God with us. These are clues for us, but not clues like a who done it. It's a clue like when God spoke to our ancestors in the faith, Joshua or Moses, God said, "You are on holy ground. Take off your shoes. This is our holy ground." In Luke chapter 2, we read, "So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea." to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, 
because there was no guest room available for them. This is a good place to talk about mystery in the Christmas story because there's nothing miraculous happening. No angels, no signs, no heavenly choirs, no dreams. It's just a literal baby being actually born, just like millions of babies before and after. That's the way the writer in Luke tells us the Christmas story. So I want to give some attention right now to the normal amount of holy that happens when a child is born. This is already a mystery. So I'm going to tell this like it's a story about my family because it is, but I want to clarify because there's lots of little people in the room. This is probably a very familiar story. And if you've ever been in a situation where there's a person that wasn't in your life and then they grew in a womb and then they were in your life as a person, this story will make a lot of sense to you. So three years ago, my sister had a baby for the first time. It's my baby niece, Karis, and it was a mystery. It was, it was strange and wonderful to watch this little person growing inside of my sister. There was lots of celebration as the due date approached, but I will confess I was not remotely prepared for what happened when I walked into this hospital room a few hours after my baby niece was born. The first thing that happened is I watched my parents melt into puddles, reconstitute themselves into roughly the same shape and size that they had been before, but now they were grandparents, which was clearly an entirely different person. And secondly, for reasons I could not explain, it was a mystery. I already belonged to this child in ways I couldn't articulate and I couldn't take back. Like, I loved her, and also somewhere in the back of my mind, I was like, I got to care about the rainforests and the elephants and the gender pay gap. Like, I don't have any interest in visiting a rainforest, but what if this little person wants to one day and there aren't any left? Like, I got to think about these things. I want the world to be a beautiful home for this person to celebrate even after I'm gone. And this sort of peripheral vision awareness of these problems that I already knew I couldn't fix for her, even if I was there, like, I don't even know what it's going to be like in her 20s when she's dating. Like, online dating is complicated enough already, and I don't know what's coming next. I don't think I can help with that. Or the normal kind of darkness in life. The, those times when you don't know what you're meant to be, you don't know what you're there for, and the only way to figure it out is to go through it. And I know that those times of darkness are in everyone's life at some point, and they'll be there for her. And I'm holding this newborn baby. I'm wondering if she'll ever know how much she changed the world just by being alive among us. And that's one baby. You may have a similar story to tell. And can we imagine that Jesus' birth was not so different? Like, maybe Mary and Joseph were not thinking about the rainforests, but I think we can believe that Jesus was born, like most babies, into a family ready to celebrate his very existence and also into a world they could not fully protect him from. The people who were close to him, whether it's his family or the visiting shepherds, neighbors around, maybe they shared this feeling of, I belong to this child in ways that they couldn't explain. That's our mystery. That's our beautiful mystery, church, that Jesus came to us needing to be fed and cleaned and clothed and comforted. Jesus came needing much more help than he could give, causing pain he could not heal needing to be saved long before he was doing any saving. But we don't talk about babies in terms of what they can do for us. We know that's not what babies are for. Everybody knows that. And the community that received Jesus received him as a gift before he had anything to give him other than simply being alive among us. 
Did you know the first people to give their lives to Jesus were his parents? And they did it the same way that every parent or caregiver commits their life to their child. So what is this about? If you're the person who needs the mystery to be solved, I'm going to tell you what it's about. Look at how important it is to God to just be with us. It is not good enough if God could tell us what to do. It was not good enough for God if he could grant wishes or show up in a shining cloud, shouting commandments. That was not good enough for God. God chose the full human experience. Every aspect of human life, God wanted to share with us. Before Jesus could call anyone to follow him or take up a cross, before Jesus said a word about heaven or hell, the Savior was at our mercy. He belonged to us. And we belong to him because we knew just by his crying that he's one of us. You may be familiar, maybe too familiar, with a person who genuinely cares about you and genuinely wants to fix you. And there's no way that you will open yourself up to a person who sees you as a bundle of problems. Even if you see yourself as a bundle of problems, that's not okay. And I say this because you may have heard this story about God. How God, full of love, looked down on these miserable humans and decided to fix us. And what I want you to hear today is that God, full of love, looked on humans, and decided to be with us. No shortcuts. No get out of jail free. No secret life hacks to hurt less, or struggle less, or fall down and get up less. There's so much more to Jesus' life than the day he was born. And we love to tell those stories of Jesus setting us free and welcoming us into God's family. And we have all year for that. But it starts here with Mary and Joseph welcoming Jesus into our human family. Jesus just being with us when it was the only thing he could do. So right now, while it's still Christmas, and we can sit in this space where light and darkness can meet without being enemies, can you look at the light and the darkness in your life and see that God is with you? Before anything that God wants to give you or get from you, God is with you. In Jesus, God chose to belong to us in a way he could never take back. And that's the mystery that's worth celebrating tonight. So celebrate with us. Amen. So now's the time. What's uh everyone have a candle? Why don't we stand up and we're gonna sing Silent Night? And while we do that, we'll light the candles. Don't blow them out at the end of Silent Night. We'll sing another song. So just leave them lit for a fair bit.
your candles yet I gotta take a picture 
I'll put it on our Facebook page. Actually, our bass player will. Oh, wait. Panorama. All right, nobody move while I'm moving. The Somebody moved. You can talk. It's all right. <laughs> Got it. All right, lights up. Let's do a reading. Let's blow out our candles. Let's sing one more song. Let's go home and uh, hug people that we love. Sound good? In that order, generally, blow out the candles first. <laughs> A reading from Isaiah chapter 9. <clears throat> there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On this living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. A reading from Matthew chapter 1. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Blessings on your head. Amen. And Merry Christmas.